Hey, what's up, guys? Jake here with another episode of On The Rise Music Podcast. Today, we are honored to have special guest, producer, and great friend of mine, Finn Jones, otherwise known as Sir Charles. How's it going, man? I love the music. Great. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing, Jake? Of course, man. You know, I'm just trying to stay busy with all, with all that's going on, I'm trying to just, just distract myself, keep uh, intellectual pursuits going, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Keep it real easy. So first question that I wanted to ask, I understand that behind the name, I know the fans are a little bit curious. What made you want to choose Sir Charles as your moniker and like your name going forward with production? For sure. Well, um, my first name is Charles and I, for people who don't know, I don't go by it normally. I go by it, an abbreviation of my middle name, kind of weird, but, um, Charles, it's my first name. It's something that's part of me. And so when I was thinking of names, it's actually not the first name that I've had. I've gone through a couple of different ones. I went on like a word, random word generator on Google and picked just the first two words that popped up. So for a while, my, my name was Downcast Distortion, just the first two <laughs> words that popped up. Um, but I was always looking for something catchy, you know, and then I thought, why look for random words and when I could just drop my own name? And so sir charles just came up and then my tag i discovered by chance after coming up with the name so it was just god's plan and i had to stick with it yeah i mean sir charles sounds more real you're like coming out with like beats and everything and just sending to people and it's like sir charles you're like oh shit it's, it's kind of professional it's a little different no I, I totally fuck with it bro and I'm, I'm i'm we all fuck with it so um when was the first moment when you started realizing that like yo i really want to get into beat production were you like playing an instrument when you're younger or was it just you're listening to a shit ton of hip-hop and you're like dude this is sick i want to get into it yeah no so i've i've always music has always been a big part of my life um i've played instruments my whole life growing up i played guitar and bass in bands in high school um and then i was at a um i was at this uh taking summer classes down in um at Emory University in Atlanta one summer. And uh, my roommate down there that I was staying with, because we were staying in the dorms, and a couple other friends that we made down there, we were just chilling, listening. They introduced me to a ton of new hip hop music because what I was listening to at the time really wasn't in that direction. I, just, I knew like the mainstream hip hop, of course, but wasn't really what I was listening to on my own. So um, when, um, they uh they wanted to there was like a little uh thing like a talent show going on and they wanted to make a rap for it and i couldn't rap at all so i felt left out but i was like you know what i know music a little bit i got garage band on my laptop i can make a beat you know so i made a little beat and they started gassing me up they rapped on it <laughs> so i just kept messing around with the garage band but you know i found uh this video it was travis scott and metro Boomin in the studio making um oh what song was it off of uh days before i forget i'm blanking on it which song it was but they made this one beat and i just saw them turning up in the studio and i was like that's what i'm trying to do they just look like they're having so much fun in the studio sir dude i remember times like like last year and we would just be like vibing in the studio It'd be you me cole like Evan and 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 um, what's his name uh, Andrew? Yeah, it's fun time. This is crazy. Some of the stuff you come up with was insane. Um, now, when when uh, did you really start? Because um, I understand that this is what you want to do, correct? Like you want to start producing and everything. Exactly. When when was that moment for you when you were like, dude, like I'm pretty good. Let me just sit down, settle down, and like, yeah, I'm going to school, but let me just put all my time into like production. Not sure if there was a specific moment that that happened. However, I will say that probably around the time I was 16, 17, I started realizing that I wasn't really tailored for the normal nine to five. Like that's not necessarily what I want to do for the next 40, 50 years of my life. You know, I want to follow a passion to get into something that I really want. And that's, I also discovered something about my personality, you know, like, I hate to say it, but like, if there's something that I am just not interested in in school, I can't put my mind to it, you know? It's hard for me to get motivated in the things I'm not passionate about, but the things I am passionate about, I can dedicate everything towards it. So 
I thought, why fight that and just embrace it? And so I'm not sure if there's a specific moment, but definitely over time, I just realized that. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that makes total sense. I, I know a lot of people that, um, that like, like you, like you're sure of what you want to do. I mean, like you're just going to keep learning and, and keep pushing yourself to become a better producer. But I mean, there's a lot of people in life, which is exactly what a midlife crisis is, where they're doing something like their whole entire life. And then all of a sudden they hit a lull and they're like, damn, I really didn't want to do this. Um, so that's great that you figured it out. And I mean, with that mentality and everything, you're on the right path to, to, to just start pushing stuff. I mean, I know you have uh, a song, like a, a pretty, a pretty decent, decently like size produced song with um i, I think it came out like in january correct mm -hmm. you know, who is that with dude this, that was crazy and like how did you c come about like working with that guy uh yeah so we were um it was actually set up through um Uvin, some people he knew um they called us out to la and we uh went to the studio to help them out and uh i didn't do too much on it but i definitely added insight in there um, it was a great experience though, learned a lot about being in the studio, got to see some stuff that was, uh, kind of out of my forte into a different genre, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, definitely branched out there. Yeah. And just for the, just for the viewers out there, Uvin is a friend of ours and he's, um, he's a rapper. He's like, uh, he's a little, a little different than like traditional hip hop, but, um, he's pretty good. And, and I, I'm in the works of trying to get him on the show too and everything, but right now we're just stacked with like people. So. I mean, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. And, and I, I understand you have like a couple projects with him, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Out on uh, Spotify, we have a, an album which we uh, put out together. Uh, it's called Trapped in the Desert. Um, I produced everything on it. Um, Uvin made down the vocals on everything. Um, we also helped him out with uh, another friend of ours, uh, No Face, out of the Bay. And um, they put out a project together under a group named Two, Two Brute. And um, I had a beat on there, uh, the song Super Lemon Haze. And, you know, it's just a bunch of good collaborations, good vibes. Also, uh, the homie Kafa as well as somebody Sir. who lots of good collaborations with just, you know, um, even if you're not putting stuff out, just it's a whole different vibe when you're cooking up with other people. You just get everybody's input, everybody's creativity. And it just brings out creativity out of yourself that you didn't know you had. And it's great. Oh, totally. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked to other people, um, interviewed other people on here and, and like collaborating with people is like the best because you find out stuff about yourself that you didn't know. And you're also like, you're, you're somehow competing with each other in a very um, innocent way, like just pushing each other back and forth, trying to find like the best person, absolutely, and, absolutely, and, like the best work w within each other. So yeah, I mean, I mean, just and like you said earlier, even if you're not releasing stuff, like just the vibes and like it's like practice i mean like it's like sparring or however like a boxer would like like how people like the only way you're gonna get better is if you sharpen seal with steel like you're not gonna get any better if you're just i mean that's not to say that you can't get better yourself but helping helping people and working with people and bouncing ideas off of each other is a great way to to find out like what works for you and what's like the true sound because cole's beats are just like i have never heard anything like them before so unique. and so unique oh exactly and and like he put me on to so much other like just sounds and music because of like the stuff that he played like just consistently um mm -hmm. so that was that's that's another that's a perfect example of, of just like opening up my and i'm pretty sure you opened up your like uh perspective and, and taste on music absolutely yeah and Is about, like a, oh i'm sorry continue oh what, what you were saying before about uh kind of the small competition in it uh, i think that really uh i saw that in bands that I played in in high school, especially this one reggae band that I had. Because um, when we were just jamming, practicing, not even on stage, you know, we'd be trading off solos, always trying to one-up each other yeah. in a slight competitive way, like you're saying. But what it's really doing is elevating the music, elevating the art to the next level, because everybody's trying to improve um, with each other. Definitely. I, I totally agree with that. Um, now, like, when it comes to like production style and anything, are you looking to find a, a like, is there a specific producer that you really just fuck with and you want to like, like not, not so much like copy their style, but you're, you're like inspired by their style or is it just you kind of just have like an internal sound that you're used to and it just happens that it, you take from a bunch of different people? I think, I think um, Pierre Bourne is definitely <laughs> one of the biggest influences on my beats. Um, I see what he does and 
like when I listen to his music, I hear what he does musically. I'm able to really, if I'm listening to the new song that he drops or a new beat, it's my first time listening to it. I know what he's about to do. And that's not to say his, his beats are cliche in any way mm -hmm. or predictable. It's just musically, I get what he's doing. It's really, it, it syncs up with my brain. So definitely, I think I draw off him a lot, but I think especially since my roots aren't necessarily in hip hop, I have kind of a unique sound because there's not necessarily some bass sound that I'm drawing from all the time. I'm just yeah. trying to do what the music wants. I'm trying to give the beat what it's asking for. I feel that, I feel that. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I, I know the same exact thing you said. I mean, living with Cole and just hanging out with you like a ton and, and, and Evan, um uh and brandon too like like last year um i was able to get like a way deeper appreciation for music and like you said you can um like i i start listening to like the beats like i stopped really caring about i mean it's not that i just toss it to the side but i started caring more about the production about the music and everything and yeah like you said you can start to like you understand what's going to come next from certain producers or even certain rappers like you can kind of guess the lyrics because you're like it's not that you are predictable, but you have a style and that's unique to you as, as an artist. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know I can hear that in you. I can hear that with Cole's beats and it's just like, and I mean, other, uh, other producers beats, but you guys more, more so because I, I was, had such a close relationship with you too. Um, now we talked about uh, a, a few months or last year when we were hanging out with, uh, with a good friend of ours, Kyle, we talked about like the whole Kanye West and composition and everything um is do you still feel that you're making him proud or or are you do you feel you get to push yourself a little bit more because i remember you said you were like i want to make a beat that would make kanye west proud so are you feeling like you're getting there or are you still like trying to figure stuff out you know there's always there's always room for improvement there's always a next step to get to um and kanye west is very very high a high person to to be held to but, but um you know, I've just been, I've been grinding. I've just been taking influences from people like Kanye, uh, trying, as we all know, he went through that very minimalist uh, stage for a while there. And that's something that I, to this day, in the way I mix my drums, uh, I just try to create, not necessarily like recreate his minimalist vibe, but take from it and realize that you can break down music to kind of the bare bones sometimes. And so, especially in my hi-hats and my drums, I try to make them really just kind of the bare hit, the bare beat, just do what it needs to and nothing more. Yeah, I mean, you're famous, well, between us, but we call it the, the Finn Jones drum kit. <laughs> uh, I know Cole always talks about that, and, and I'm always hearing for it. Um, especially in that song that you, that, that you were like, uh, like giving producer tags for. I totally heard everything. Um, and yeah, that, that whole movement, I mean, I remember we had that conversation and it's like, it's, it's like less is more in, especially when it comes to, to trying to make like your own sound, cause you don't want to sound like you're trying too hard and, and you don't want to make it sound like it's everybody else's stuff. So in order to just, yeah, draw inspiration from one person that you should be doing it well. Um, yeah, that, that, that works perfectly. I mean, you know what you sound like and, and, and you know how to go about it. So, Hey, I mean, all power to you. Um, do we do we have any projects on the way? Are you working with anybody right now? Or you're just trying to you're just trying to like gain inspiration and, and just take. No, I've out? been uh, I've been working a little bit with a, a guy who's local out of Tucson. His name is Banks Sithu. Um, we've been doing some stuff together. I've, uh, we got one song out right now called uh, Michael B. Um, some more stuff on the way, most likely. Um, I got some other stuff out with a guy uh, named Silmi. Um, he's out of uh, China and Spain, um, so lots of stuff going on, but I'm also spending a lot of this quarantine not necessarily putting out as much new material, as much as kind of refining my musicianship and kind of getting up on the knowledge, you know. Um, so when all this comes out, and I really like to start getting more into, I think, live music is almost a dying art today, arguably. Yeah. When you go to a concert today, it's, it's, it's not, uh, there's obviously great live performers, but I think the art of live, of live performance is, is starting to die. So once, obviously, COVID is a big barrier towards that, but once that's done, I'd love to start trying to get some more live stuff going, you know? 
Oh, definitely. I understand you play the bass too. So that would be pretty sick to just see you up there shredding. Everyone in the crowd is like, Char- Charles, Sir Charles. <laughs> but yeah, that'd be, that'd be, I mean, I, I'm going to definitely be there. I, I, I know Cole definitely will. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's great. Um, using yeah, live music and, and trying to incorporate it and everything. Um, it, it is a dying form. You don't see a lot of bands anymore. I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, the 60s and 70s and 80s had like the craziest like music, rock stars, everything. But I mean, it's not like you can't recreate a singular or not a singular sound, but like an individual sound for this age. I mean, Tame Impala is doing it um, like that. That's, that's fucking crazy. That, that's a live band right there, too. But yeah, I, I totally agree. Not many people are are, are turning to that because. I mean, it's easier to, to, to like learn how to do it on, on, a, on a laptop. It's a lot simpler than it is to like start playing the guitar, start learning the drums. But yeah, I mean, hey man, if you can get on stage, I, I'm going to definitely make it out there. Yeah, I'll bring you up there. Oh, perfect. I'll be like, yo, here with, with On The Rise Music, we got Sir Charles <laughs> on the bass. Yes, sir. Um, are you, I, I remember la, or la, it was last year that you started working a little bit with like EDM and house production. Are you still with that or you're just focusing solely on, um, hip hop? I, I definitely try to experiment as much as I can. Actually, uh, a couple of days ago, a friend of mine here in Boulder, Colorado, um, he uh, came through and laid down some keys and we put together a little house track, um, that may see some light on SoundCloud, but, um, Ooh, okay. No, always trying to experiment, trying to branch out and not tie myself down musically because I honestly, I don't view myself as a producer. I view myself as a musician. You know, I want to be multifaceted. I want to be able to do whatever my brain says musically. So branching out into EDM, into all sorts of different genres. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a really good like mentality to have. I know I've spoken to some, some producers on here and they've said the same exact thing. They're like, I don't want to be bogged down. I just want to be able to have like a freedom. Cause if I'm pigeonholed to one thing and I start losing like either what, whatever it be, maybe inspiration or just ideas, then it's like, I've only done this. So if I come out with something and everyone's like, what is this? Like, it's not going to be received the same exact way. And that idea of a musician, I mean, it's true. Like you have to, you have to begin to, you, you can't, yeah, you can't label yourself. You have to just be able to be like, yo, I'm multifaceted. I can play an instrument. I can produce, but I don't produce for one genre. I produce for everything else. So yeah, that's, that's an amazing mentality to have. And I, I, I wish more people had that because I mean, we're seeing a lot of people that are just dying within a single like, like, like genre. And it's like, yo, you could expand, just learn and, and cope and, and start to change with the times and everything. But um, yeah, man, I mean, I'm excited to hear that house. I've I've been listening to a lot of house house uh, producers and and house DJs now because of this radio show. It's, it's been it's been real. It's like it's kind of a shock because I was like, dude, how can you get someone to just be like, with no words? I know, like, just I know. With no it's words. Tight rhythm. It just literally. That's what it is. I love music that just makes you like subconsciously move your body. That's oh, that's definitely. what that's the end goal always to just get people moving. Oh, totally. Living with B money, like, like high key. I was just like, dude, house music goes. Like I never even thought I would listen to it. I mean, shout out Kanye West for the Yeezus album for, for putting me on a little bit that way to like the sound and everything. But I mean, living with Brandon and him just bumping that all the time, like just waking up in the morning. I'm like, damn, this shit goes. No doubt. No doubt. Um, now I understand that you're in Colorado right now, correct? Yes, I am. Um, have you, uh, what have you been doing there? Just like, just hanging out. Just, are, are you working right now? Cause I understood you had a job last summer. Is that, is it yeah, kind of- actually, uh, I'm getting involved with a studio here called stone cottage studios. Um, we're actually, um, they're doing a lot of really great live streaming of, uh, performances, uh, for, uh, musicians who are missing out on a big part of their income because, you know, uh, yeah. can't be out there touring, can't be out there performing. Um, so the live stream concerts is a great thing they're doing. It's also a full recording studio. Um, so helping out there a lot, um, you know, just been grinding. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, there's not much to do really. It's just, you gotta yeah. do what you can, gotta push yourself a little bit. Um, now I understand you got like a whole brand and everything with Sir Charles. Would you uh, wanna collab with uh, some atrocities? Get, oh, get, 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 a, get a little atrocities collab going for the fans? You, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get back to school um hopefully everything works out i mean damn yeah i know crazy, crazy. crazy i mean like they did some press conference today and it sounded like 
I don't know. They were like Arizona's beginning to flatline, but I was like, but I was like thinking that I was like, dude, there has to come a time and point where everybody that wanted to go out has gone out and like they've gotten everyone that they knew sick. So like, it's going to have to just start declining. But the other bad thing about that is that you can get sick again. Like if you've already had it. So it's like, you're fucked. If you go back out and you're like, I already got it. Like I'm safe. And then you get it again. And you're like, well, fuck, I'm here for another month. Whole situation is just fucked. Dude, and yeah. Like the fucking black plague in China. <laughs> Bro, it's like, I, I was, t- I, t- I tell, I told a couple people about this, but like the whole, like the whole year 2020 is just fucked because like the, the number 2020, it's a double, like it's a double of itself. And yeah. like this past year I took like, I took an English class um, and we were learning about like Freud and everything. And, and the whole doubling as, as like, a, as like a mentality for like kids it's like okay when you have a doppelganger, like an imaginary friend, because you're young and you don't really understand the world. So you use somebody that looks like you to help you cope and like learn about what's going on. But as you get older, you see like a doppelganger or a doubling as like uncanny because it reminds you of like mortality and like your death. So I was like the year 2020, I mean, I don't want to scare nobody too much, but I mean, it's kind of representing the doubling effect, which foreshadows the mortality of of the world you know what i'm saying yeah. open that third eye take off your hat let it breathe <laughs> they're saying the the mayan calendar like started a couple years late so it's actually yeah that, it's actually this year i was like well shit like <laughs> hopefully i just make it through but the other thing bro i be having like some weird theories like i was talking to like a friend of mine from high school the other night and i was like dude this whole thing like the whole new world order and everything i mean it's painted over in, in like the denver airport and mm-hmm. like you see like all the pictures and everything and like basically the message is rise from the ashes like like a new and like all that's going on right now like they're literally just looking for the fittest to survive because they're not taking any like action to like help help like protect anybody or anything so i was like dude what if like like trump is just like fucking new world order type b and just and just creating like ooh, and just like he's like yo everyone that survives you're part of the new world order everyone who doesn't survive like sorry about it like that's so insensitive though, but I was just like, dude, like, like, I can't, I can't, like, I can't conceptualize why you're not like acting on this besides the fact that you're making a political issue. But like, fuck dude, like, I mean, let, let a dude wonder a little bit. Like there's nothing much to do in quarantine. No doubt. Uh, everything's weird, bro. Oh man. Um, how's, how's like the Black Lives Matter movement going on, on, in, on in Colorado or Denver? Is, you know, is it, it like was- pretty strong? It's, there was definitely in Denver, there was a very strong presence. However, here in Boulder, there was not as much. I was actually really, t- I noticed, I, like, it was shocking to me that there was no, nothing going on initially. Like, when the rest of the country was popping off, like, the first week, mm-hmm. it was just, life was normal here. So it's definitely odd. And, like, the demographic here is very, very predominantly white, I will say. But it still like as we've seen everybody's coming together over this oh, definitely. um however after a, some time there were uh, organized protests uh here in boulder i went and took part of them um it was great to see everybody out there um but yeah denver had a great instant response but i know that there was also a lot of police brutality in those uh protests in denver it got pretty bad i saw and um that's just like it's so unfortunate to see like like it's just like the message is in one ear and out the other in that oh, definitely. yeah dude I, like, I don't understand how like I mean I'm not throwing shade or anything but like how these like I mean like you said predominantly white neighborhoods how these middle middle class like upper middle class kids uh teenagers white kids they're just like so obsessed and enamored with the hip hop culture and everything and what it stands for. Yet they don't go out and like support black lives matter. They don't want to go out and fight for somebody's just basic human rights. Like it's just, I mean, if you don't agree with me, then you can go ahead and unfollow me. I'm going to tell you straight up right now. Like, I don't care. Like that's just the bottom line. Like you can't appreciate a culture and you can't appreciate an art form and, and a people without actually understanding that they need and deserve respect. Like that's just the bottom line of everything. So I mean, like, like, shout out to you, bro, for going out and doing your part. Like, like, that's, that's a huge thing. Just, just being a, just being a voice out there. And, and I could do. It, literally, like, like, that's like, I mean, you did your job, though. I mean, you were looking for ways to help out. You, you, you went out and, and did your thing. So, hey, congrats, man. Like, like, that's, that's huge for, um, I mean, it's may, it may seem small. It's just going to a protest, but 
you're a voice and that, that voice gets louder with the more people that, that, that back it up and everything. All right, man. Well, I could sit here and literally chop it up with you all day. I've done it before and everything. Um, but I understand you're a busy man. You got to help out at your production studio. You got probably got to make some more beats. You know what I'm saying? Just, just hanging out, kicking it, doing, doing your creative stuff. Um, but I wanted to ask you uh, two more questions. It's like, oh, one more question, but it's like a two-part uh, thing. So first things first, what would you tell a young Sir Charles or like just a young producer that's like coming up and that, that, that wants to, that wants to be like, like you, or that wants to just push themselves to, to, to just create music and, and get their name out. And on top of that, um, it could be anybody. It doesn't have to be like a small artist, but who is one person that you're just bumping right now? It's just heavy. All right. Well, for the first part, um, I definitely say to anybody getting started, beginning, anybody young, there's no, easy there's no shortcut there's no fast track there's no easy way to it you got to put the time and like it's everybody starts somewhere you can't get discouraged if you're not getting it right away but like you got to put the time in it's countless hours it's making the sacrifices it's not going to parties it's not sleeping some nights if it doesn't let you, you know you got to really make those sacrifices put in the work put in the hours because that's the only way to really get it and uh, there's, there's just no faster way. Um, and then who am I bumping right now? Uh, honestly, I've been um, really bumping a lot of uh, Grateful Dead, um, okay. taking it back okay. to the roots. I've been, um, who else have I been listening to? Um, lots of Cardi, as always, lots of Pierre. Oh, of course, of course. Pierre dropped the deluxe, deluxe version. Yeah, so you're probably feasting right all now. The time. <laughs> All right, man. Um, well, yeah, I mean, what you said earlier about just like sometimes you may never see. I mean, fuck, I've woken up like at two, three in the morning and you and Cole are just still there just making beats like like back in the dorms. And I was just like, damn, are you guys going to bed? And you're like, no, it's not good yet. We got to just keep going. But yeah, that's that's totally true. Um, but not going to parties. So many people. Yeah. How are you going to get to the top if you don't put the effort in and the time in to like be the best? So great piece of advice great artists you're listening to i mean shout out the old music shout out grateful dead shout out all the oldies bro like we wouldn't have where we're, 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 yeah, excuse me we wouldn't be where we're at without those people pushing and, and pioneering rock and roll and giving us the giving us the rock and roll attitude that that, that rappers are starting to embody today so i want to again said let's not forget that those rock and roll artists were drawing off the black blues musicians who were exactly. really getting started back exactly. in the day. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better, my, better myself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We want to thank Sir Charles for coming out and, and being our guest for the day. Uh, follow him on Instagram. That is at Sir Charles, correct? Sir Charles Beats. Sir Charles Beats. Uh, like and subscribe and to On The Rise Music, and we look forward to seeing you on our next interview. Peace out, guys.